TFF where you concentrate it up, you do that because you have so little AAV that in order to load it on a affinity column, you would need to load it for several hours, days, too long. So you need to concentrate mm -hmm. it before. So if you can get the first step, I think a lot of companies are at now is if you can get your productivity of your upstream high enough, you can just completely mm. delete that TFF. I call it TFF one, that first okay. concentration step prior to affinity. Mm. And that's a whole. So if you imagine the yield of any step is like 80, 90%, I mean, with, with AAV, and then, then that's an instant bonus in yield and, and time. Mm -hmm. so I think that's a good thing to strive for mm -hmm. um, with the purification. Other than that, there's different mm -hmm. affinity resins coming out. I've, mm -hmm. I've been a proponent for maybe um, affinity um, membrane chromatography. So you can just churn, because when we don't really care about capacity so much at this point, it's mm -hmm. more yeah. being able to process large volumes quickly. So I, I think that's that's kind of a need that could be met. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a lot of development with the empty, empty removals of an exchange. Yeah. There's both mm -hmm. innovator improvements and then the vendors um, for example, um, Sartorius brought uh, beer separations and mm -hmm. they've recently come up with a more reproducible version of their SimQA, common use SimQA column. Mm -hmm. So I'll, yeah. I, I won't, I'll go, probably go to Justin now before I. Yeah, yeah. Go on too long, but there's a Justin. lot going on. Well, yeah. <laughs> what what you catches your on. eye? I think you've had on a, a number of opportunities in there. I mean, <clears throat> elimination of process steps always does have, should yeah. have the benefit of, uh, Redu you know, reducing losses in, in the downstream operation. Um, I think a lot of this in the industry has gone this where they found the ability of empty full separation chromat chromatographically has really, uh, the understanding of that and the uh, ability that's really improved over the years, being mm -hmm. able to transition away from, you know, a ultra centrifugation based process that you may have seen in some of the earlier ones coming. So I think, you know, newer re resins are becoming more available separate you know, techniques are becoming more available towards it so that you can continue to continue to innovate um, around this. And I think mm -hmm. ultimately in a more scalable format and looking more like a traditional biologic uh, process yeah. uh, here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, this this actually is going to pave the way really nicely into how you guys see the the outsourcing realm and the and the the world of, of manufacturing around us. Um, taking shape. But first, I, I do want to jump to our last poll question really quickly for, for folks watching. So in which functional area do you feel the greatest innovation is yet to come in the AAV space? We've got analytical development, cell line development, downstream purification, formulation, supply chain and logistics, and F is other. And as uh, I said before, please feel free if um, you feel like elaborating and being loquacious on <laughs> what other might be to you, feel free to, in, to include it in the uh, Q&A uh, section. Um, but I'd, I'd love to sort of advance the question here in terms of what capabilities we're seeing improving in terms of, we've, you know, we've, we're seeing more resins coming on the market. We're seeing companies sort of merging to, to build their capabilities in certain areas. Um, how well equipped would you guys say, and Justin, we can start with you here. Um, I know this is this is one of your, your probably your bread and butter, right? How well equipped are we in the outsourcing world uh, from a capability and technology standpoint um, in, in meeting regulators' quality expectations? And and where do you think we need to be seeing more maturity or efforts being made to to further uh, move the bar? I'd say. Um... Yeah, the CMO marketplace has matured greatly in the last several mm -hmm. years here, with a lot more players coming into there. Um, particularly, you know, you know, eight years ago, you had almost no commercially event, no CDMO yeah. that was able to offer commercial capacity for for mm -hmm. an AV product. And today, yeah. you have several facilities that are built and are yeah. producing, uh, you know, commercial products for the space. So that's a mm -hmm. a, a great uh, advance in capability and and marketplace there. So I think. Mm -hmm. A lot more that's available today than was there. I'd say that mm -hmm. the space is still, I think, as you look at it and navigating as a sponsor, there's a few things you have to consider when you look at this. There's still yeah. a lot of heterogeneity in the programs mm -hmm. that are out there. Mm -hmm. And the capability is heterogeneous between the CMOs you go with, right? They may have, you know, they may be more familiar with one expression system or the other, um, and they may mm -hmm. have more technology tailored to one or the other. So you really have to understand what your needs are and yeah. find the right fit from a technology standpoint. 
I think the other thing is from a relationship standpoint, depending on uh, who you're looking for in the space, you have to find the right fit for your for the organization you're with. There are large organizations that are probably more volume driven um, mm -hmm. you know, versus if you're after a rare disease or a smaller company trying to find one that can meet your program needs and are uh, you know able to handle what your the particulars of what you're going for are. You know, they, yeah. this is not a commoditized industry yet. Everything is yeah. still a little bit, it's custom to the expression you're using, the programs you're advancing. And so I think those are the, you know, the challenges you have to navigate uh, within the space. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a much, um, there's a lot more options today. Um, and if you go yeah. through that, there's the, uh, the, the pick list is a lot longer than it once was. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's a more difficult choice today than there was. Um, but that's, that's sort of my reflection. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd like to actually to further that a little bit, you know, and, and you mentioned sort of looking internally and thinking about what's important to you, right, and to your product and your pro your projects, right, your processes. I I'm really curious if you have a, a go to, you know, as we're thinking about quality, right, especially and, and I think there can be some some trade offs sometimes in terms of quality, scale, yield, etc. We're looking for um, in today's world, you know, how do you um, are there any go-to considerations about a CDMO partnership when, as it relates to quality? You know, is there a make or break for you in terms of picking a, a partner um, that you think they're, what they have to offer um, is, is really going to do wonders for, for what you ultimately need? I mean, it's probably two things. It's ultimately, does their, I mean, their facility capability match with what our product needs to make, right? Do they have the mm -hmm. equipment? Do they yeah. have the, you know, do we, do we have the same experience? We've invested heavily in process development here and we understand our mm -hmm. processes very well. Um, yeah. And so we, and we've characterized them in a number of systems. So we need to make sure that they have similar capability there. Yep. I think the other piece goes into that organization's quality mindset. It ultimately mm -hmm. it comes down to the, they, how high on their list is quality um, yeah. as an organization. I think that mm -hmm. assuming the equipment matches, that's a real differentiator between the partners you work with of how they, how they view and how they operate their facilities. Um, if you yeah. do that very differently, you're not gonna, it's not gonna be a successful relationship. You're not gonna jive, yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. Andrew, I know you've had experience as well with this. You've you've dealt with tech transfer, et cetera, and in, in, in the process of working with CDMOs. Uh, I'm curious, you know, how would you how would you uh, address what Justin has talked about? Are there are there ways that you're looking at or or see areas of growth in the outsourcing realm that that you feel really could, could stand to, we could stand to see some more innovation or are you seeing things moving along really well? Well, firstly, I agree with what Justin said about the quality. So first of all, you need to make sure they have the equipment and then mm -hmm. you need to make sure more importantly that they operate it according to GMP principles, yeah. QC, QA. Yeah. Um, I would say for me, I've had the most difficulty working with CMOs in the analytical space. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. one process, but it's, I don't know, 20, 30 different assays you have to establish yeah. and qualify. So mm -hmm. it's almost 20 times more. If you call an assay a process, it's almost 20 times more yeah. processes that you have to go through. So we, we've seen delays um, in our products due to the time it's taken our, our, the collaborators to get, get the assays um, developed yeah. and qualified mm -hmm. and then run the sample. So that's, I think that's the thing that you might overlook when you pick a CMO. Yeah. Um, but you really want to have a game plan for your analytics. Mm -hmm. So am I going to do all the analytics that the collaborator are they capable? Um, are they are they staffed to handle all, all the assets I'm going to give them? If we have to outsource, do we want to outsource as a bundle or are we going to outsource mm -hmm. to a, a series of different? These are all things you need to think about and make sure you have everything planned Absolutely. at the start. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, I think I think one small thing I think CMOs could improve on is I. Th and this is not really science related, but I find they have very high staff turnover. So for mm -hmm. me, a differentiator yeah. in a CMO would be less staff turnover so you can maintain consistent relationships Tenure. with the people yeah. because the most difficult part of tech transfer, tech transfer is all about relationships. So once you have mm -hmm. an established relationship, it can be um, disruptive if, yeah. if you um, don't have to change. 
Yeah. No, that's that's an absolute. I've heard that. I've heard the analytical development piece has also been a big consideration for us as a space. And I think that's one of the areas where throughout the history of mankind, folks have, have argued that analytics in the outsourcing realm is one area that, that can always stand to use some more innovation, right? And an ability to, uh, capability, I think, in general, right? So those are really good points.